I don't know. People said in 2020, let's imagine 2050. You can't. You can't. You're not. So uh, that's, my, that's my favorite request on stage. Can you give us a prediction for 2050? I'll do it. I'll I still do it. I can barely give a prediction for 2030. I'll still do it, but I'm doing it in the spirit of how humbled I would be when the actual 2050 comes based on what I've researched for the past 150 years. So You're that I'm going to make three predictions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make three predictions. One, we will have designer drugs. They'll analyze your genome, find drugs that will have no side effects for you. Why do we have to be a statistic in the reported side effects? You know, I'm not very side effect prone, so I generally ignore that, but many people are. So figure that out, medical community, so that there are no side effects. Have the medicine do only what it's supposed to do. Don't make it make you throw up or give you diarrhea or depressive thoughts or rashes. <laughs> Fix that. Okay, that's one. Two. I think in the not too distant future, all cars on the road will be self-driving electric. And you say, no, that's, that can't be. No, no, but I, because we went from horses to cars in 10 years. I'm just talking about going from cars to another kind of car. That can surely be less time than going from horses to cars. Self-driving, and, and, and but you, know, you know how you start that? Only self-driving cars in the HOV lane. Then, then these cars know where all the other cars are. If you want to change lanes, it tells the other car, I'm changing lanes now. They part, it changes lanes. And they can even text and drive at the same time with no loss of their acuity on the road because they're freaking electric computers. And they can drive 120 miles an hour with two cars distance between them because there's not going to be something they don't anticipate. And so once you see that, cutting down your travel time, I think it's going to go quickly. And suppose, but you're a car enthusiast. What do you do? I'd like my, uh, my a classic car. There'll be car parks for you to drive. <laughs> Is that any different from people who like riding horses and you go to the stables and ride horses? It's quaint, a quaint memory of a bucolic past. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you've got your Ferrari, whatever. Go, if you park it at the car park, you'll take an electric car to get there, and you can do your thing uh, as we now people who ride horses. So I see that happening. Mm. Last thing, um, I'd like to see space. People ask, what, where, where should we go next in space? All of space. Why does it have to be a next destination? When we built the interstate system, which to the tune of $100 billion, by the way, about the same as going to the moon, uh, what drove that? Well... War drove that. What's the other name for the interstate system? Old timer? Oh, he's scratching his head. The Eisenhower Internet System. He went to Europe in the Second World War, saw the Autobahn survive under rain and snow and tanks could roll over without it falling off the side of the road. He says, I want that in my country as a defense project. And so the initial monies for that all came from the defense um, we're informed by our posture as a country that didn't want to get invaded and wanted to keep our military ready on the... And you may know, the interstate system doesn't go over mountains, it goes through them. And after every distance, there's a certain stretch that is straight so that you can land an airplane on it if you had to. It is to military specs. That's how that money got dislodged. So I'm saying, when you build the interstate, you don't build, let's just go from New York to LA, no, give people choices. So you send the interstate everywhere, let people's creativity take them to wherever they want to start whatever businesses they want or have whatever free life they want to lead in a country that we still think is free. Uh, and so, so when I think of space, I think of not a rocket to go here or there, get a warehouse of sort of strap-on boosters. And I say, I want to do science on the backside of this comet that's coming through, we need these three boosters and this rocket, and we'll schedule the launch in three months. Think about that. I then do. the entire solar system becomes our backyard. And it's not this other place. It is a, we, we'll have a relationship with it. And yeah, let's mine some asteroids. We have wars on Earth over the limited access to resources. 
that are plentiful in the universe, in our own backyard. The future of space is one where an entire category of warfare will be rendered obsolete because access to resources will be unlimited. We'll still fight over which gods you worship or what your skin color is, probably, but this category of war would be gone forever. If the entire solar system had lanes that you would take and you decided where you wanted to go and it wasn't something, a single national destination. And the only thing we know about these predictions are? They're gonna be wrong. Yes. <laughs>